Welcome back everyone, I'm Eric from Rare Candy and today we're going to be taking a look at some new cards that just got revealed in full for Japan and that is going to be their Matchless Fighter set. So this is actually going to be part of our Chilling Rain set coming out in June. So it is going to be a little bit of time before we get to play with these cards, but it's still fun to kind of take an early look at these, see what might be worth keeping an eye out for by the time they do release. Now, one thing that is important to keep in mind, though, Chilling Rain is going to be comprised of this set as well as at least another Japanese set. So, you know, even though I might like or dislike one, you know, a couple cards in this, uh, you know, first impressions video, that could easily change once we get a more complete picture of what this full Chilling Rain set is going to look like. But nevertheless, just going to go over some of my knee-jerk reactions today, see what might be worth keeping an eye out for by the time it comes out. But before we get any further too, guys, if you guys can't remember, smack that like button. Genuinely, it really does help get this video seen by more people. And also, too, at the end of this video, comment down below, too. I want to know what cards from this Matchless Fire set uh, you guys are going to be looking forward to as well. But let's get into it. So up first, we have a Single Strike B Drill. Um, let's take a look. Uh, Weedle and Kakuna don't look too impressive, but see B Drill. 130 HP, Fire Weakness, one Retreat. If your opponent's active has any special energy, it is knocked out. Okay, that's pretty cool. Grass for 110, discard energy from this Pokemon. Okay, not a terrible damage to energy ratio either. You know, I think if we're playing this though, I mean, it has to be for this first attack. There's no way we're playing this just to do 110 for one. I mean, 110 for one, like I said, isn't bad, but just for being a stage two, and it's a lot of effort just to do 110 damage. So I'm not sold on this second attack, but the first one is kind of interesting. You know, we have single strike energy, rap strike energy, speed lightning, all sorts of good special energies in the format right now. Um, but I think it's just really difficult to build around because, I mean, if you just go all in on getting these B drills set up, then, I mean, what do you do if you play against like Picarom or I shouldn't say Picarom because they play speed lightning, but uh, you know, like a welder deck, a lot of them just play fire energy. So um, yeah, I think you have to find a good partner for this card. Not sure what it's gonna be offhand, but uh, I, I mean, I do like the fact that it's an instant KO. Just getting three easy prizes is definitely enticing. Single Strike also could be relevant. Um, well, Single Strike and Energy doesn't work for you, so you can't accelerate this with Houndoom. Um, I'm pretty sure there are some other Single Strike supporting cards in this set, so I'll have to keep an eye out for those. But, you know, card seems interesting. I'm not sure how much I like it, though. So we have Heracross. All right, flip two coins. If both are heads, it does 160 more. Oh, okay, so 200 for two, not too bad. Um, okay, I mean, the more I'm thinking about this, I kind of like it, dare I say, because with a single strike energy, that puts you up to 220. It's like the magic. Oh no, Zacian is resistant to you. Never mind. Okay, card is immediately bad. <laughs> um, you would need, what, two single strike energies and a vitality ban? Yeah, because the minus 30 resistance. Okay, so if this if Zacian was not resistant to grass, this card actually would maybe be okay because you have Glimwood Tangle um, and Houndoom to get this guy set up. So yeah, probably a pass. Um, yeah, not a big fan of this guy. Okay, next up we have Blaziken VMAX. This was actually one of the very early cards that did get revealed ahead of time. Clutch, fire for 60, they can't retreat. And then Max Blaze 130, attach an energy from discard to up to two of your benched Rapid Strike Pokemon. Okay, so it's actually a really good number to hit for too, just because Zacian, of course, is weak to fire, so this can easily one-shot a Zacian. Uh, even if they have like a Metal Goggles or something like that, this also will be enough to still take a KO. So the numbers this thing hits for is pretty good. Um, but yeah, what are we playing this with? Because I don't think you build around this guy. I think you are building this to support some of your other Rapid Strike Pokemon. I mean, I think probably the easiest one to think of is Rapid Strike Urshifu. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem too bad because you can come and do 130. And then you can threaten a G-Max Rapid Flow, I think is the name of the attack, um, on successive turns. Because this actually doesn't say basic energy. So in theory, you could actually accelerate two Rapid Strike energies. Uh, to two different Rapid Strike Urshifus, leaving them both just one attachment away from getting um, their second attack off. So if you go 130, next turn you can have two G-Max Rapid Flows back to back, and that actually seems pretty good. So I actually kind of do like this card. Uh, the fact that I can use Rapid Strike Energy makes this a splashable attacker really in any of your Rapid Strike decks. So yeah, I kind of actually like Blaziken. 
Uh, I'm very curious to see what else comes out in this set alongside of it. I know there is a Zera Aura that is most likely going to release in the same set, which could be a good partner. But right now, I think Urshifu is the big one I think everyone is going to be thinking about. Uh, but yeah, I like Blaziken. I, I dig this card. Let's see, we have a Volcarona. Let's see, a Larvesta. Also not a terrible attack, I guess. Volcarona. Let's see, 170 discard to energy. I mean, that's a welder and an attachment for 170. It's really not a bad... I mean, it's honestly pretty much a perfect two-shotting number because uh, obviously you can one-shot Zacians, but you can also two-shot e Eternatus and everything below that. So, I mean, it's honestly not the worst card in the world, but welder, I mean... Fire is such a good type that you really have to be an exceptionally good Pokemon if you want to go toe to toe uh, with the rest of the format. I mean, if you're playing this, this means you're not playing Scent Scorch, you're not playing Victini D Max, you're not playing Blacephalon, uh, etc. So I think this card is actually like not terrible, but Fire is such a good type, it's going to sort of cannibalize uh, this guy. So we yeah, have Tentacruel. I don't know the last time we got a good Tentacruel card, so I'm not expecting much from this guy. See 100, your opponent's active is now poison. During their next turn, they can't retreat. Doesn't matter because every deck plays four switch. So, yeah. Dully Bird, this was another one that did get revealed a little bit early. Has a cool attack. So for a twin energy, you can return this Pokemon, all cards attached to it to your deck, then search your deck for any card. Uh, it's kind of a cool hit and run style effect. Um, you, I mean, maybe there's some sort of control deck that comes out down the road where you might want to play this. Not really sure. Um, I mean, I like this attack, don't, don't get it wrong, but I just don't know what you're playing this in, really. I mean, even if you use this attack, I mean, your opponent can still just go Marty and ruin your whole turn. So I think this card's neat conceptually, just not the biggest fan of it uh, competitively right now. But I mean, it's still a good effect. You can attack for a twin energy. So there is a world where maybe this sees play. Uh, okay, we have Inteleon. So Inteleon, uh, this evolution line was interesting. Do you want to find out Sobble? I do remember this thing had a good attack. So for a color synergy, search your deck for three Rapid Strike Pokemon and put them on your bench. Not too bad. So I definitely like that. Uh, Drizzile, not too good, unfortunately. Um, but that's fine. We can always just play the other Drizzile anyways. I think we would prefer that just because it allows you to search your deck for a trainer card. So, I mean, this one is Rapid Strike and that could be relevant. But most of the time, I think just getting a trainer card if you're not playing Rare Candy is going to be a better effect. And then, of course, we have Inteleon. Uh, it's kind of a pseudo Decidueye GX reprint, so we can put two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. I mean, this is definitely a good effect, especially since it's on a single price Pokemon, a, a Rapid Strike Pokemon at that. Uh, also means that it's going to get some additional support. But uh, I'm not sure how much I like this effect right now, just because, you know, Decidueye GX was a very popular card all the way it got printed, all the way up really until the tag team started to come along and that's when we really started to see um like stage two and evolution pokemon like fall off a little bit and with hps only you know becoming higher and higher ever since tag teams with you know v maxes i don't think a card like this really is going to have a shot immediately i mean we'll have to keep looking at the set there might be some other stuff that this pairs nicely with um but my knee-jerk reaction is that i'm not super sold on this maybe once tag teams rotate and you know the most aggressive thing in format will be like Zacian, then maybe this has a better shot. Um, I guess, I, got, I mean, we could always use the, what, Rapid Strike supporter to get this thing in play. So I don't know. It probably has more of a shot than Decidueye GX would just because it's Rapid Strike and it's a one prizer and there's ways to cheat it into play. Um, so who knows? Uh, it's definitely a card I like just personally, like aesthetically, but I'm not sure what this would be played in. Okay, we have a Rapid Strike Urshifu. It's going to be a single prize one. Of course, Rapid Strike card, as you would expect. So let's see, 30 for each of your Rapid Strike Pokemon play. Okay, that's not too bad. So if we have a full bench, uh, we're hitting 180. It's not a bad little two-shotting attack, just being a one prize Pokemon. Um... Now, I guess maybe, I mean, maybe this is the deck you're playing Inteleon in, actually, because that can fix your math a little bit. Because figure if you have two Inteleons in play with a full bench, you can hit for 220 effectively and knock out Zacian. So, I mean, that's really about all you want, I think, out of a one prize. You need to be able to at least one shot two prize Pokemon and then two shot V maxes. So, I mean, you can attack for a single Rapid Strike Energy. 
Ah, uh, maybe. Um, this card's actually not terrible. So, yeah, I think this is one to maybe keep an eye out for. I do kind of like this one. So you may attach your Lightning Energy from hand to one of your bench Pokemon. Not the worst thing than Thunder for 130. Yeah, nothing too special. Um, I, I guess I should say maybe this could be a Decidueye sort of counter for Lightning decks in the future. Maybe there's a reason to keep an eye out for this card, but not too sold on it right now. Alrighty, so up next we have the Dracozole Evolution line, and I did see these cards already. And can we just get some some love here for how sick this artwork is? Uh, Dracozole's like, I think, just an abomination of a Pokemon in general. I think the, the fossils from the most recent gen are just ugly Pokemon, but man, I'd be lying if I say this art was not sweet. So yeah, really love the way this thing looks here. Um, but let's take a look at what this does. I don't remember this guy being too good. I think the VMAX was a little bit more interesting. Um, but Rumble Break 30, they can't attach energy. Okay, that's actually not a terrible attack if we do have to attack with this while we are waiting to evolve. So that might be able to buy you some time to get set up a little bit more. Um, Trick is ult VMAX. All right, so first attack, 60 during your opponent's next turn. If this Pokemon is damaged by an attack, they take 12 damage counters, which is insane because we still have Giant Bomb in the format, so we can slap down that. Force them to take 220 for attacking into us, which is absolutely nuts, I want to point out. So, yeah, maybe there's like some meme potential with this. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that, that is kind of funny. So I, I do like this attack. Is it competitive? Eh, that's up for debate, but... I'm definitely going to experiment with this thing. I'm very much so looking forward to um, putting Giant Bomb down this thing and just telling your opponent, do stuff. Like, what are you going to do? Attack into me? Um, but I will point out, I mean, your opponent can boss around this thing. They can even go like Escape Rope or Fion, then boss it back up to attack into it. Then the other attack, just a flat 200, um, which you can fulfill with a triple acceleration energy. So that's not too bad if you do need some extra damage in a pinch. Just kind of bummed we can't knock out a Zacian B with this attack. Uh, a little bit shy of where we need it to be in that regard. But uh, this looks like it's going to be a fun card, if not a competitive one. All right, so we have Galarian. Oop, scroll past that guy. We have Galarian Articuno V. So 210 HP, Dark Weakness, Fighting Resistance to Retreat. So once you're in your turn, you discard two cards from your hand if you do draw a card. Then 110, not really too special for this attack, but this ability actually not too bad i think mad party is going to be one of the decks you would have to consider for this uh just because they want you know cards in the discard i think there's also some cast forms coming out i forget if it's this set or the next japanese set that also wants stuff in the discard so really if you're a deck that wants cards discarded this is pretty nice uh this could also help if you want to play the mustard supporters to cheat your rapid and single strike energy into play this can be a nice way at lowering your hand size a little bit in the process so that seems uh like a good use for those and these do stack so if you have multiple of these in play you can keep doing this to cycle through your deck so i mean this card actually does seem pretty good again you're probably never attacking with it but there's definitely a few decks out there a few cards out there that would like this effect uh, also it's kind of pair nice with cricket tune I, I could even see a world where maybe you build some sort of like non-supporter based engine to draw cards where you are just like drawing through your deck with these guys refilling your hand even more with Cricketune or rose tower that seems kind of cute um but yeah card seems good we have slurpuff i remember this card being kind of annoying so oh yeah this is the like pseudo control sort of card we flip three coins for each heads you get a card from discard put it into your hand so obviously you would play this in the same way that you would play something like the Excadrill we have in the current format or the old Rangru, where you play, you know, Team Yelgrunts, Crushing Hammers, you know, whatever it might be. Then you end your turn by refilling those into your hand, ideally with this guy. Um, I mean, we have Glimwood Tangle to help out with that, but that means you can't play other disruptive stadium cards like, you know, Power Plant or, um, I mean, I guess you still could play other stadiums, but I think you want the Glimwoods to be able to guarantee the three cards back every turn. And getting them into your hand is actually pretty good. So if you can just average out two cards in hand every turn, this actually might be kind of a decent disruption option. So let's see, we have a new Hatterene. The other ones have not been too good up until this point. So let's see what this one does. Once during your turn, you may switch your active with one of your bench Pokemon, then have your opponent 
Okay, so it's escape rope as an ability, which it's not the worst thing in the world, but not getting a stage two out for this thing. Then psychic 30 plus 50 more for each energy on your opponent's active. So not like a horrible card by any means. If this had been maybe like a stage one or a basic, maybe we'd be in business. But yeah, for a stage two, this is definitely a little bit underpowered for where I think it needs to be. So next we do have a Rapid Strike Diglett and Doug Trio. Uh, Diglett actually not too bad, has the Dig Attack. Could buy you a turn while you're getting set up. Uh, then we have Doug Trio here. Let's see, flip three coins, so 60 for each heads. If all our heads prevent all effects of attacks, cooling damage done this Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. That's kind of cool. I mean, the odds are not in your favor to hit three heads. Of course, you can change that a little bit by playing Glim with Tangle, but um, you know, on average, you're probably going to be hitting around 120 with this card. I don't think that's really enough to make a case to play this thing. So we have a single strike Galarian Surfetched. Alrighty. I actually will point out to the Galarian Farfetch, just doing 20 for one is not awful either with the single strike energy. That's 40. So not bad ship damage potentially. So let's see, this guy has Leak Strike. This Pokemon has a tool attached. It does 90 more damage, and this attack's damage isn't affected by resistance. Okay, so 90 plus 70, 160. Um, that is a little bit shy of where we need to be on a couple things out there. Uh, but luckily, we do have Houndoom, Single Strike Energy, all the good stuff. So 160. You have three Single Strike Energies. That's going to be enough to knock out a Zacian. But that's just... I think it's a little bit underpowered. If if it was only like two single strike energies, maybe I would make the case for this card, but yeah, I'm just not crazy about this thing. Okay, we have Galarian Zapdos, the Eternatus Killer. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about this card just because it's just such an absolute monstrous hard counter uh, to Eternatus VMAX. But yeah, for each of your Pokemon V your opponent has in play, this attack uh, is one color or less. So of course your opponent's gonna have if you're playing this Eternus, they're going to have Eternus Maxes, Crobats, Valyrian Slowbro, all sorts of crazy stuff like that in play, meaning that you can just nuke them. So for one fighting energy, effectively, you're going to do 170. And before doing damage, you discard a special energy, meaning that they can't even play Weakness card to get around you. So if your deck is just getting bodied by Eternus, you just play a Zapdos, man, and it will uh, get you at least one easy KO. Only catch is it does have to be fighting energy. So that's something you have to watch out for. So you will need Fighting Energy or Aurora Energy if you want to, you know, get this guy up and running. But yeah, this is a pretty monstrously hard counter. I don't think I've seen a hard counter like this in quite some time. I mean, the only way this could have been even more of a hard counter is if they specified Eternatus VMAX uh, somewhere with this card. But yeah, it's a really good Eternatus counter. Beyond that, probably not too crazy. But um, yeah, good card for what it is. See, next up we have a Giglith. And pretty sweet artwork. I really do like this. This is one of my favorite artists in the TCG, so I am a little bit biased. But uh, let's see what Giglith can do. Giglith has never this Pokemon has had basically terrible cards ever since it's become a Pokemon. So hopefully that will change. 50 during your opponent's next turn. Takes 50 less. Um, That's actually not the worst thing in the world. Since we have four retreat, we can play buff padding, so 230. So effectively 280 HP if they want to take a one shot, which is kind of wild on a, uh, you know, Pokemon like this. And actually the more I'm thinking about, I don't actually hate that as somewhat of a strategy. Because if they, well, no, 50 is just not enough damage. I was going to say, because you could play things like Cheryl, and every time they attack into you, you just Cheryl attach and keep the tank train a rolling. But yeah, 50 is just not enough to build around. Uh, 180 is not too bad. But then this Pokemon does one or does 10 to itself for each damage counter. Not too crazy. So I think this card's interesting, but it really needed to be like 80 or something like that for this first attack to, to really consider it, um, you know, more seriously. So we have Galarian Runarigus. This was another one that did get revealed ahead of time, I remember. But this Pokemon is in the active and is damaged by an attack. From your opponent's Pokemon V Max. If even if this Pokemon's knocked out, put damage counters on the attacking Pokemon equal to the damage done to this Pokemon. Um, then let's see. 60 plus 20 for each energy on your opponent's active. So the attack here, not too special, but this actually can be relevant because this is definitely, I think, poised to be somewhat of like a hit and run target. 
So if, if you play something like Greedent or Behem, you switch into this. And if they don't knock you out, you could, in theory, slot down a triple XL since you're probably playing those already and maybe soften something up. But yeah, a uh, card like this, it's really annoying that this is limited to just VMAX. I think this really needed to be any Pokemon V for that matter, or any Pokemon with a rule box, that would be, you know, a little bit of a better sell. But, you know, as we get further into the, you know, the Sword and Shield era of the game, and once tag teams start falling off and VMAXs uh, are just become more and more prevalent, maybe this card gets a little bit better, but not my favorite hit and run uh, target. I think I'd rather just play Altaria, for example, most of the time. So we got the Simeon. I do remember this card being pretty good. All of your Rapid Strike Pokemon's attacks do 30 more to your opponent's bench Pokemon B and GX, but you can't use more than one of these at a time. Okay, so yeah, this is definitely good. This is going to buff your Rapid Strike Urshifu to be able to snipe more, so that is good. Um, yeah, so instead of doing 120 and 120, you're doing 150 and 150 with GMAX Rapid Flow. So that's definitely really good. Uh, with a Telescopic Sight, you're one-shotting the Denes and Crobats, so... Yeah, you're easily playing this in any Rapid Strike or Shifu deck going forward as well. Uh, this guy also being Rapid Strike means we can search it with Octillery, so something else to keep in mind. Um, but then also, it's one attack here isn't awful either, fighting just to do 20, 12 of your opponent's Pokemon. So with this ability, you can effectively snipe 50 somewhere in the early portions of the game, which might not be the worst thing, but of course, this ability is really good. So yeah, Pesemian's awesome. We have Galarian Moltres Feet. This was another burr that did get revealed very early but i remember liking this one as well once during your turn you may attach a dark energy from discard to this pokemon but you can't use more than one of these abilities per turn the next attack for two dark colorists is 190 and this pokemon takes 30 damage so this guy like kind of sets himself up which isn't too bad but i don't think we're really playing this to attack with moltres it's just kind of like a uh, it's kind of like a bonus side effect from playing the card you might have a backup attacker but I think you're playing this in something like Eternatus or maybe an expanded something like Turbo Dark. Um, because with something like Eternatus, if you play this guy, you can use something like Weavile GX or Energy Switch to set up an Eternatus out of nowhere. So if you're playing against a deck that is playing Hammers or Energy Disruption, you can go Attach Return, Accelerate Energy with Moltres, and then E-Switch or Weavile the Energy off of Moltres onto your attacker. So I think that's probably the most likely... Um, you know, way we would play this. I think this actually could be just like a half decent form of energy acceleration in general, uh, just because if you're playing a deck that has like colorless energy and you're a multi-attachment deck, this could be a nice form of energy acceleration, kind of in a similar way that people sometimes play Tapu Koko just to cheat an extra energy into play, even in non-lightning decks. This could be a similar thing where you just play a couple E-switches and a Moltres to act as your like second attachment if you need one in a pinch. So yeah, I, I like Moltres. I think this card's pretty good. Let's see, we have Slowking VNV Max. So single strike, also something important to point out. It says discard a card from your hand, then draw three from decks. So not a bad like early game setup attack. Um, Doom Word, the defending Pokemon is knocked out your end of your opponent's next turn. So that's kind of cool, but I mean, as I've been saying, guys, most decks right now are playing very heavy switching counts, so more than likely this isn't gonna actually work, but Kind of a cool attack. Let's see. Sloking V Max here, 320 HP, just one attack. Max Toxin, dark colors for 10. But your opponent's active as poisoned, and they take 12 damage counters between turns. Okay, so I mean, unfortunately for this card though, like I've kind of said, most decks are playing heavy switching counts. And if I mean as long as that's the case, this card's not going to be that great just because they can always just switch and then you know, they're stuck with that damage. Now, I guess you could play something like Dust Island if you wanted to attempt to force your opponent into keeping this 12 damage counter status condition. Um, but I mean, if this thing sticks for a turn, I mean, they're going down. I mean, that's just so much poison. And I guess if you really want to, you could attempt to compound this with something like Toxic Croak as well, if you really want to. Um, we have Hound Doom as well. So we can also use that to accelerate our second energy here. Um, also, single strike energy will, of course, let us do more damage as well in the process. So, I mean, if decks start playing less switch cards, this card becomes immediately, I think, more interesting. But for the moment, probably not too great, unless there's something I'm forgetting. 
All right, so we have Survivor. So of course there is going to be a Zangoose in this set. Um, that would make sense as well, I would imagine. Uh, let's see, two dark and a colorless. If you played a single strike supporter from your hand this turn, does 90 plus 90. Okay, so 180, it's not a bad number, but then two single strike energies is 220. Okay, we're cooking over here. That's enough to knock out Zacian and two shot any V maxes. That's, that's like the standard for the bare minimum that a card should do. So not too bad, I gotta say. Um, and of course, we just play this with 4-4 uh, four, four Houndoom, Urn of Vitality, Single Strike Energies, kind of call it a day. So it honestly doesn't seem too bad. That could be a nice little budget deck people could experiment with. So I do like that. Okay, not a horrible card. You know, after ADP rotates, a card like this actually could become a little bit more viable. All right, so next we have the Mad Party Killer. A lot of hard counters in this set, apparently, but Spirit Tomb, its first hack is kind of like a combination of Karen and the old Oracorio. But for a colorless, you count the number of Pokemon in your opponent's discard, put that many damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon any way that you like. Then your opponent shuffles all of the Pokemon cards from their discard into their deck. So yeah, it's kind of annoying. Now, I will say this, this could actually be used as maybe a tech against Mewtwo Mew decks as well in the short term, while that is still legal. Because you can shuffle all of those Pokemon back into their deck and force them to have to find them again. And obviously, if you play against Mad Party, you just dumpster a deck like that. So if Mad Party ever does become a deck that gets more support, you know, Spirit Tomb's unfortunately just going to be a hard counter for the deck, which is kind of sad to see, because I actually think Mad Party is a really sick deck. Um, just kind of waiting on ADP to rotate and maybe to get a little bit more support for the archetype. But Spirit Tomb, unfortunately, is a pretty good tech for that matchup. Okay, we have Skullpede, I'm assuming is going to be trash. Skullpede's always bad. 100 plus 120 more if they're poison, so not too good. I'd rather just play the uh, Survivor we just looked at. I think that's going to be an easier way to do a similar amount of damage. Let's see, we have a Scrafty. Scrafty also Pokemon usually bad. And what do you know? This one is bad. <laughs> uh, but we do have a Single Strike Urshifu. I'm assuming this one's going to be a little bit better. Okay, so Field Crush 50, Discard of Stadium. Not too great. Then Dark Dark Color is 100. If this Pokemon has any damage counters on it, does 100 more. Okay, so I think I actually might like this even a little bit better than Survivor. I think it kind of fills the same role, but this this seems like this seems nice because you can even scale up high enough to knock out things like Picaron, uh, whereas you can't with Survivor. I mean, it'll, I guess technically it's possible, but it's going to be more difficult. So even this, even though this is a stage one. Um, I think I actually do like this because you don't really need many modifiers to knock out a Zacian. Uh, it's going to be easy to knock them out even if they have like a Metal Goggles or a Big Charm. Your single strike energies can get you over that hump to still take one shots potentially. So yeah, I actually do like this guy. I think this is actually a pretty decent little one prize Pokemon we have here. Uh, just because we have Houndoom. So we probably play 4-4 four, four Houndoom, 4-4 four, four of this guy, Urn of Vitality, you know, maybe an Ordinary Rod. And then from there, just... You know, researches, Marnies, all that good stuff, and call it a day. So, yeah, I actually kind of like this card. And as expected, we have a Zangoose here. Makes sense. Let's see what this guy is going to be. Actually, kind of cool. I, I do like how they did this. Uh, the Viper is single strike. So, of course, Zangoose is going to be the opposite on the other team. It's going to be rapid strike. So, just thematically, I think that's a really cool concept they have here. Let's see. If you put a rapid strike supporter from your hand this turn, this attack is 50 to two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. This does need three energy. Yeah, I'm not too big on this one. For basically the same attack cost, we can just use Urshifu to do more damage. I guess I will say um, Pissimian does work with this guy as well. So you can do 50, then 80, 80. Not like the worst thing, but since we have Urshifu that already does something similar, I don't see a big reason to play Zangoose right now. So yeah, I like the Survivor a little bit more, I would say right now we have shaman has sky return but you don't have setup so you're worthless <laughs> so yeah not too good there we have stoutland okay i don't remember this card so this pokemon is in the active your opponent's active pokemon's attacks do 30 less damage so back to be 190 hp not the worst then 120 plus 100 more on a coin flip. I mean, okay. I mean, with a heads flip, 
and you're playing Glimwood Tangle, all that good stuff. I mean, you knock out a Zacian for a triple XL. Uh, I've I mean, I've, I've, I mean, I've seen worse cards. I'm not gonna lie. Um, or I can just play Zacian V instead and do the same thing as a basic Pokemon uh, without a coin flip. So, yeah, probably not gonna place that one. But this card was less awful than I expected it to be. I'll give it that much. It's 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 not good but it's not completely unbearably bad, <laughs> like I expected. Uh, Braviary, unfortunately, this one is bad. Okay, so that's all of our Pokemon. Look, Looking at the trainer cards here, we have Welcoming Lantern. So we choose a single strike supporter from discard, put it into our hand. Okay, um, so it's kind of like a Versus Seeker for single strike cards, not too bad. I do wish this was closer to something like Hall and Transceiver though, where you could search out a a uh, single strike supporter or get one out of a discard because right now there's not enough good single strike supporters to really count on having a lot of them in your discard pile like realistically right now well i might be speaking too soon we have to look at the supporters in this set still but i mean right now we have bruno coming out in battle styles which is a decent supporter but that's a card you're only really going to play as like a one of maybe so it's probably not worth playing this just for like a one of or a two of in your deck when the rest of your supporters are like Research and Marty. So we're gonna need some much better single strike supporters before we consider this. Echoing Horn, this card is actually sick. We put a basic Pokemon from our opponent's discard onto the bench. Just another card to help ADP just destroy decks until it rotates. Basically is what this is because you can take the Denes that they've discarded, put them on their bench, then just boss them up. So yeah, this seems nuts in ADP. Um, is there a world where we play this outside of that? Maybe in Urshifu, just because we're playing Octillery, we can search this out, put something on the bench that we can get a cheat KO on with GMAX Rapid Flow. So, I mean, that's okay. And we can play this in non-Rapid Strike decks as well, so we do have to keep that in mind. But ADP and Urshi right now seem like the most compelling cases I can think of off the top of my head. But yeah, this is a good card. We have Galarian Breastplate. So if the Pokemon it's attached to is Galarian in its name, it takes 30 less damage from opponent's attacks. Not awful. Um, I think this card really only matters if it changes like a one shot to a two shot. So in those cases, we'll have to keep an eye out for this card, but it is kind of a passive tool. Your opponent can just tool scrapper it. So yeah, I'm not sure how much I like this. Kind of wish that was the inverse. I wish this was plus 30 damage. That would be a little bit nicer. Um, but yeah, so not the biggest fan of this thing right now. But I mean, we've seen things like Metal Goggles see play. So there is a world where this does as well. Like I said, it just depends on if the 30 damage is the difference between your opponent taking a one shot or a two shot or two shot to a three shot. Okay, we have a single strike supporter. So let's see what this one does. During this turn, your single strike Pokemon do 20 more damage to your opponent's active for each prize card your opponent has already taken. Okay, so this is kind of like the old Iris supporter card from back in the day, but a little bit better. So if your opponent has taken five prizes, so it's plus 100, that's actually really not too bad. Um, again, the, the big issue I have with a card like this, I really do like this in conjunction with the Lantern, but we need some better just general engine, like sort of support for these single strike cards, because I think a card like this is really only good with something like an Eldegospy, a Mewtwo, or this new Lantern card because you only really want to play like one, maybe two copies, and it's going to be hard to find on the turns that you need them. So again, ideally, we're going to get some more good single strike supporters. That way we can play this whole Lantern engine. So we have Clara. Choose up two Pokemon and two basic energy from your discard. Show them to your opponent, put them into your hand. Okay, so it's kind of like Ordinary Rod, but as a supporter, but you get them straight into your hand, which is obviously a little bit better. I don't think this card's probably too good in the short term. Ordinary Rod is just generally better. Now we'll say if we ever get something like a, like another sort of item lock effect in format that affects both players, we could see a card like this emerge uh, just because very long time ago when Vileplume decks in the Heart Gold Soul Silver era were seeing play one sort of common card that would pop up from time to time would be Flower Shot Lady, which was a card that allowed you to you know, get Pokemon energy back into your deck, but it wasn't an item, so you could still play it under item lock. That's where I could see a card like this being good, but not too big on it right now, though. I imagine the, the full art for this is gonna be very uh, expensive, though. Um, 
<laughs> but yeah, competitively, I don't think it's too great. Okay, so we're getting down to the wire here. We have Avery. Another just insane Eternatus counter. Draw three, then your opponent discards their bench until they have three bench Pokemon. Like, the thing is, Eternatus is a really good deck, but I don't think it's... I, I feel like Eternatus is, like, perfectly beatable. I, I don't think Eternatus is strong enough to warrant Zapdos and Avery coming out in the same set. Um, so, yeah, if you're a, a deck that's just been getting pounded by Eternatus in recent months, you're going to be stoked on this set, that's for sure. Uh, but, yeah, this is a solid card. Also, again, for Eternatus, if you can't play something like Zapdos, if you don't have the right energy to support that attack, this card's also going to do the trick for you. Uh, now, you do have to watch out because against other things, your opponent can discard their Dedenes and their Crobats and stuff like that. So that is where this card might not be good outside of their Eternatus matchup. I think it's going to be good against maybe like Stage 2 decks, if not that those see play, unfortunately, but against like Evolution decks uh, where they don't play too many like just worthless bench sitters um, like Dedenes and stuff. So it seems good against things like that and also Eternatus. Okay, we have Brawly here, Rapid Strike Supporter, okay. So search deck for three Rapid Strike basic Pokemon, put them onto your bench, then shuffle your deck. I mean, it's like not the worst thing in the world, but my issue with cards like this is that right now, since we don't have a card like Tapper Lady GX, you kind of have to play these cards in high counts if you want any good effect out of them. I really wish this was any Rapid Strike Pokemon because then there is a world to I mean, there's more of an argument to be made to playing multiple copies of this in your deck because then you could still get good value out of it in the mid to late game. But yeah, I'm just not a big fan of cards like this right now. I wish, you know, if we're going to get cards like this, which I'm definitely down for because this does help single prize decks. I really wish they had the claws on the cards where you could play them on turn one. That's the thing I wish would change about these cards, but it is what it is. It's still an okay effect. Not sure if I'm actually going to play it though. And then the Lone Stadium card in the set. Both Pokemon play can't be healed. So if Cheryl does become a very popular card, this could be, you know, a way to tech for that maybe. But this is going to be a very passive stadium. So your opponent could just bump it from play. Um, so not sure how much I like this. Yeah, so that's, that's going to bring us back to the top. Yeah, I think I like Blaziken in terms of new attackers. I think it's definitely the best VMAX that we're going to be getting. All of the birds were good. Again, just in general, a lot of cool stuff coming out in the set. But of course, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video too, this is only going to be about like half the cards that are going to be in Chilling Rain. So there very well could be other cards that make some of these obsolete or even could enhance some of the ones that aren't too playable just yet. So definitely curious to see what all is going to come out alongside the rest of these. But definitely sound off down below in the comment section, guys. You know, you heard some of the stuff I am excited for, but I want to hear what you guys are looking forward to in the set as well. You know, is there anything you think I was, uh, you know, a little easy on or anything I was a little too critical of? Let me know down below in the comment section. But that's going to wrap up today's video, guys. I hope you did enjoy today's content. Of course, as always, if you did, be sure to smack that like button. And if you want to take your support to the next level, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg or pick up some merch at rarecandytcg.com. It would mean a lot. But as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.